Well, now a complete change of pace and a routine surgery that ended in disaster. An operation that was supposed to help a man breathe more easily, but left him crippled. Basically, I was dead. My family had sort of been told, look, he's not going to live, so come back and prepare for that. Nobody should have to go through this. You know, no family should have to go through this. He had it all. Happiness, health, fitness and a love for life. So how did Daniel Hogan go from swimming, hiking, even training horses to this? A partial quadriplegic who will never work again. I've, I've gone from a sinus operation to now being a cripple. It all began, he says, with a simple visit to an ear, nose and throat surgeon. Initially I went in for a complaint for a uh, um, sore throat and the doctor just pointed out to me, he said, oh, you've got you know, sinus problems, you can breathe into this nose or breathe through that nose. And he sort of said, that could be the cause of what was causing my sore throat. Daniel says he had no idea he even had a sinus issue, but he went for a scan on doctor's orders to be told this. Daniel, I know you're a young man, um, but you need to have an operation. What did the doctor say was wrong with you? He said that I just had a small pocket in my sinus, just the only, only little, one little small pocket where I had oxygen, to, you know, oxygen can get in for me to breathe, and that that needed to be, my oxygen, uh, my sinus cavity needed to be cleared out um, in order for me to breathe better and sleep better, and it just changed my life, basically. Changed his life, all right. Complications after surgery have left the 38-year-old permanently disabled with paralysis from the neck down. The cause, meningitis, an inflammation of the protective membrane covering the brain and spinal cord. Daniel has no sexual function. He uses a catheter. He's in constant pain and can hardly walk. Is that a struggle? I'm in pain already. Daniel is a prisoner of his pain. A former fitness fanatic says on a good day, he's lucky to walk 50 metres. Uh, it's heartbreaking. Just um, and incredibly frustrating. I just, just all pain, the pain that it puts me in, um, I just, it's just so depressing. And I just, you know, I just go back inside and I'm so depressed some days just from what, I, what little I can do. Daniel is suing the Royal Melbourne Hospital and his surgeon for failing to diagnose his meningitis quickly enough so he could be given timely care. Well, this illness is time critical and minutes matter. Daniel's lawyer, Demetra Debro, is the medical negligence principal at law firm Morris Blackburn. Unfortunately, meningitis is a risk of the procedure that Daniel underwent. And what can happen is um, a defect can occur in the base of the skull in the nasal cavity where the surgeon's operating. And what this allows is a leak of the spinal fluid. And this causes an inflammation of the meninges which surround and protect our spinal cord and brain. And this is how this bacterial infection takes a hold. Tell me about Daniel's claim. What are you saying went wrong? I would say it's a case of a missed opportunity or many missed opportunities to diagnose and treat Daniel so that these devastating consequences wouldn't be with him. The operation was performed here at Masada Hospital in Melbourne by surgeon Mr Ron Trower. What were you told by the doctor to expect in terms of side effects and recovery? Meningitis is a risk but look don't worry we just give you antibiotics for that. Daniel's statement of claim says in the days after the operation he rang the surgeon feeling unwell to be told he probably had a virus. Well the claim against Dr Trower is that he was contacted about three days after the operation and so he knew that Daniel was feeling unwell, he had a headache and this was an opportunity for Dr Trower to uh, diagnose meningitis and for Daniel to have some early treatment of his condition. Daniel's condition worsened. The headache was just just really thumping, it was just I couldn't, I couldn't open my eyes, like, I was just so painful, just, just, I was just trying to massage the pain out and I was vomiting and I just really didn't understand what was happening to me. Friends brought him here to the Royal Melbourne Hospital Emergency Department. The swelling in my brain was pushing my brain down into the back of my spine. All too late, Daniel claims his meningitis was diagnosed, but the damage was done. And what has it done to the family? 
Oh. It's just, it's shattered, shattered everybody in, a, in, in different ways. Lisa is more than Daniel's big sister. Now she's virtually his carer. Well, thank God he pulled through. Yeah, in some ways. In some ways it's not that. What do you mean by that? Well, is this the life that someone would want to be like this? So these are your tablets, Daniel? What's the routine? Uh, two of these twice a day for pain. Uh, four of these once a day for spasms. And this one at night uh, for depression. Is Daniel's claim a common type of claim? Well, unfortunately, we do have cases like Daniel's involving delayed diagnosis in our hospital system and in particular in our emergency departments. Uh, and it's just simply a reflection of the pressure that the system is under. You heard the interview with Daniel when he says he sits in this room and cries. Yeah. What does that do to you? It breaks our heart, breaks my heart, breaks all of us, yep. To know that that's, that's his existence now. And we really are a close family and this um, has really just killed, killed us all. The Royal Melbourne Hospital says it doesn't want to comment because the case is before the courts. We've also tried to contact the surgeon who has not responded. A current affair believes the compensation being sought is up to $2 million.